Hi, LaserLord here with my very first video walkthrough about hacking the Canon SX40, or really any Canon camera for that matter, just select different files. So first, we can go onto Google, search CHDK, and you click on the wiki, or you could go to the link, which will be in the description, and you can read all this information, it's very helpful, but we're here for the download, so we click on the download link, we skip the ad, and we'll find ourselves here. There's lots of information here about what this stuff does, what it is, and just a bunch of stuff that is very helpful. And here you'll find all of the links to download the data for your camera, like any model or firmware update you have. For SX40, it's all the way at the bottom. Depending on which firmware update you have, it depends on which one you want. My camera was 1.00i. Yours may be any of these other ones. So you'd click on the one that's your firmware version. So we click on that. Should download there or in your downloads folder, depending on which internet browser you're using. So we open this up and we see the files. And this vrs.req file is the one that lets you know what the firmware version for your camera is. I'll tell you how to look at that later. And that is probably the most important file on there at the moment. There's also the README, which is very handy if you want to learn how to use it and about lots of stuff. I read it and it's really helpful. So first, we highlight all of these and we copy them and then we paste them into our SD card. So then we get to the SD card, and it's very important that you use an SD card reader because you can't just use the cord to your camera because you can't upload things onto your camera through the cord. You have to use an SD card reader. So now we're in the SD card, and we just want to paste them here. Don't paste them in the DCIM folder. That's the one thing you don't want to do because then it won't be able to find them. So after this is done downloading, we'll be able to do all sorts of stuff on our camera and also see if this is the right one for our camera for a firmware version so after this is done downloading we can get to the camera normally takes about a minute should be here any moment now a little word of warning though there might be a few errors in these things like it might cause a mechanical error, like lens to go too far, but normally they have blocks on those so that like no matter what it won't go further than that, but just a little word of warning that might happen, but I've tested this one. This one's perfectly fine. So now we connect out of that and that and I'll already put the SD card in the camera. Okay, so now that we have the SD card in the camera we can see if it's the right version and get it to run. So we start out by pushing the play button, turning on the camera that way, because it won't work if you turn it on the regular way. So then we're here, and to see the firmware version, you put the function set button and display button at the same time, and then you'll see firmware version pop up on the screen. And if it's the right one, good. If it's not, try again. So now that we confirmed that it's the right version, we push the menu button and we scroll all the way down until we find firm update. We hit the OK select button on that, scroll to the right, and hit update. Then the camera will restart and that logo will appear. The CHDK logo. And now we're here, it doesn't look too much different, but when you go into shooting mode by pushing the shutter button, you see a bunch of new gauges at the top. Now, now we know the hack is working. So now that the hack is working, I can show you some of the features and how to use it. You start out to access the menus, push the shortcut button, and then you'll see the little alt appear at the bottom, and then you hit menu. Now this big menu will come up, and there's extra photo options, videos, raw, all the stuff you need. Now, this automatically doesn't save things in RAW, but you can make it by selecting it there. 
It saves it in a, I believe, a CR2 format. So if you have a CR2 reader, good. And then you can just put the shortcut button again to exit that. And another neat thing about this is you can set shutter speeds of like, like really anything really. So you go into the extra photo parameters and you can include like, oh, yeah, there's an override shutter speed value, which currently is 2048 seconds. But the value factor is what really matters. Right now it says it's off. You select one to turn the override on. And same thing for the override ISO value. You can set it really anywhere. But this camera, because its max ISO is 3200, will only accept an ISO of 32 times 100. And, or else the camera will just like shut off. So then you go to 32, value factor 100, and then it will automatically shoot at 3200 ISO. And if you turn off the override shutter speed value, it will shoot regularly only at ISO 3200. Therefore getting around the annoying 100 ISO 15 second shutter exposure thing that they put on there. I really don't like that. And that's one of the main reasons I got this thing, but if you hit the shortcut and then function set button, you'll see a bunch of scripting stuff. You can load script files and script shooting delays and all that. And this, it comes with a bunch of stuff like HDR, an interval, which is like time lapse, and a motion sensor. That's really neat. And you can also read text documents with this program. And there's also a few games and stuff. Not very good games, but still. And you can have a live histogram, if you look here. And really anything you would need. So that's the hack. You'll be seeing a few photos coming up on what it can do. And a few of the, most of the photos were actually taken in like really dark conditions, like 10 o'clock at night in winter, with no flash, no external lighting, just using the ambient, the ambient light around. And it's just really astonishing what this camera can do with the hack. So now that we're done with that, we're ready to basically play around with the hack. Now it does occasionally make the camera shut down, but you can get around that by bus just pushing this button whenever that happens. This one right here. It will basically like put it back to where it needs to be. So here's some photos.